So one of my friends called me and he was wondering why he was getting irrelevant phone calls for his business when he was running his own ads. And little did he know that Google Ads has changed dramatically over the past couple of years. Hey everyone, my name is Ruan and in this channel I teach you SEO and digital marketing strategies to generate more phone calls and more leads for your business. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create an effective landing page that's going to generate leads for your business, completely optimized for the mobile and desktop version. Once that's done, I'm gonna show you how to show up for the right ads and the right keywords that you wanna do right above the map section and right above the actual organic section on the mobile device. I'm gonna do all of this by bringing you key by key, stroke by stroke, inside of the actual editor and inside of the actual Google Ads account. And I can pretty much guarantee by the end of this video, you are going to be an advertising expert when it comes to Google Ads and when it comes to optimizing optimizing your landing page for conversions. At the end of the video, I'm even gonna show you the results of the ad campaign because my client started immediately getting bookings. First step is actually going to be logging into Google Ads. So as you can see, I have a manager account here. And once I get into the dashboard, I'm gonna head over to the accounts tab and I'm gonna click on the clients that I'm gonna be working on. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the billing to make sure that it's billing the client and not myself. And I'm gonna do that by entering in their credit card information that they provide to us. Now before moving along and actually building the campaign, I'm gonna create a call tracking phone number that I'm actually gonna be able to use for this entire campaign that's gonna to ring to them every time a new lead or this phone number actually gets called. I'm gonna to wanna to keep the area code exactly their area code so when visitors see the landing page, they can relate to it in terms of area code and actually know that they're local. Once that's done, I'm gonna activate that call tracking number and then I'm gonna jump into the editor and I'm gonna create a new page based on the home page. Well, I'm gonna no index this page so Google can't find it organically and then I'm gonna change the copy to be around the offer and the headlines that the client instructed me that they wanted to do. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and add a reviews tab onto the landing page because that ultimately increases conversions and clean up the landing page a little bit more, removing the footer section and making it more landing pagey. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the actual header section. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow visitors to not click through the website when they land on this page because we want them to complete one action, which is schedule an actual repair with the business instead of navigating through the website. So I'm gonna clean up the header a little bit and then I'm going to do the same thing on the actual mobile version. So on the mobile version, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop a logo right on the header section. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add another row above. I'm gonna put in a header three and that's going to be the actual phone number of the business. And then from there, I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna to click to call for the new call tracking number that we have set up. I'm gonna change the background so there's a little bit of contrast and I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner. I'm gonna hide the mobile header and then I'm gonna link both logos to the landing page. One thing I like to do as well is I like to actually create what's called a floating button. A floating button is actually going to allow me to actually have that call to action floating throughout the page. And I'm gonna change the text on the button to actually be the phone number so a visitor can always see the actual floating button there. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on the design tab, clicking the floating option, centering it, and then making sure it only shows on this page and not the entire site. Now our client is using a scheduler, so I went ahead and pasted that scheduler directly on their landing page. I'm gonna set an anchor that it can link these buttons so when they click it, it goes right down there. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and check the mobile version. I'm gonna check the desktop version and the tablet version. I'm gonna clean a few things up. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and actually publish this page, grab that URL, and that's gonna be the URL that we're gonna use in Google Ads to actually send traffic to. So make sure you check this thoroughly before you actually click on the republish option or actually update your actual web page. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and click new campaign in Google Ads. I like creating ads with no goals and uh, you no know, guidance. I'm gonna do search for this campaign and I want website visits and I'm gonna put the URL of our actual landing page. You can name it however you see fit, that's the formula that I use. And then what I'm gonna do is when you actually put in the URL, you're gonna get a bunch of keyword recommendations from Google. Although all of them are not going to be correct, I'm going to eliminate a lot of them that are not in line with what my client's goals are, which is getting more residential in-home repairs. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and actually start editing the actual headline. I'm gonna use an AI writer to give me back a bunch of actual headlines. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start actually pinning some headlines here on this section. So I always show the same ad copy for this ad in the two top sections. And then the rest of them, I'm actually gonna put in just some custom headlines here for all of the different types of uh, products that they actually repair and can actually service. Using that AI generated text, I can now start to add in more headlines and then once that's done, I'm actually gonna be able to put it into the description section and use that content to actually display on the ad. As I'm building this out, you wanna make sure you maximize this as much as possible so Google can give you a good optimization score. In this description, I'm gonna use that AI generated content and I'm gonna put a little twist into it of what I actually used and I actually wrote, just of what little things I think that are gonna help convert the visitor a lot better. So I'm gonna put this content in here and I'm gonna combine it with some of my natural human content just to make it look full and enticing. 
Now, in the sections of the assets, there's things called site links. You always want to make sure these are optimized as much as possible. I put in as much optimization and site links as possible, including the reviews, the brands, the about, etc. And the same thing goes with the callouts. Callouts are going to be these different why choose us statements that you can add put that there and then under more asset types you can actually do things like add the phone number which I always recommend if a visitor is on mobile they're going to be able to see that mobile phone number uh, appearing there and then you can actually do other things like stru stru structured snippets and in this I actually do service level category it's just the easiest way that I found to actually add structured snippets and you want to add this as much as possible because it's going to allow you to get a much bigger ad as you can see on the screen right now when a visitor actually goes and searches you. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and just change the network. I'm gonna remove the display network. I don't want display. And then I'm gonna change the location targeting to not be the entire United States and just the county of where my client wants more clicks and more phone calls from so they can get better leads. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the budget. As you can see, Google will give you a recommended budget. I'm gonna change it to $2,000 per month. That's their goal. And then Google's gonna tell me a weekly clicks and weekly cost and average cost per click expectation. Once that's all set, your campaign is almost ready to publish. I'm gonna go ahead and click the blue publish campaign section, but we're not done yet. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to keywords and then I'm gonna change all of the keywords to not be broad match and instead I'm gonna change the match type to be phrase match. What that's gonna do is it's going to allow me to show up for a lot more relevant keywords rather than broad keywords. Once that's updated, I'm then going to go ahead and click on the uh, actual overview tab and I'm going to go over to more details and what I'm looking to do here is looking to change our bidding strategy. Right now it's gonna maximize clicks, I don't want that. I'm gonna change it to actually go in manual CPC so I have complete control of how much I pay per click per keyword. Once that's all set, at the ad group level, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the max CPC. I'm gonna put it to $2 because that's what Google almost recommended. And then as you can see, once that's updated and I go back into my keywords, you're gonna see that every max CPC for each keyword is up to $2. The higher this is, the higher you show up for. Now inside of the ads, I'm gonna add one call ad. I want an ad that's just gonna show our phone number so visitors when they search on their mobile device and they're ready to call, they can just call instead of reading our landing page. And so call only ads can be extremely effective especially when you're running ads like this where there may be an emergency. Once that call only ad is all set, you can see that's what it looks like. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and click save ad. And then at the end of it, and I'm gonna just gonna double check everything to make sure everything is accurate based on what the client wants and their goals. So the ads have been running for quite some time now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop into the computer and show you how to navigate the Google Ads dashboard after you started seeing some performance. Once the ads have run for a few days in the dashboard, you're gonna see real-time data coming in. This is why I like using manual CPC because it starts off pretty quickly. You can also filter the actual metrics by all of the metrics that Google Ads has. Also, Google's gonna give you something called an optimization score. Really, a lot of PPCs ignore this, I don't. Personally, I think it's great that Google gives us an estimate of what is going to make us perform better, and they'll also make recommendations. Inside of the platform, you're also gonna see some of the keywords that you're bidding for and how those keywords are performing. Very similar to the main stats, you can filter this by the type of metrics that you wanna see and ultimately make better decisions by looking at the data. Inside of the search terms, I always like to take a look at this. We're going to talk a little bit about this after, but really you want to make sure that your keywords are showing up here as relevant as possible. Sometimes, as you can see here for refrigerator sales, we may want to put this keyword into a batch of keywords called a negative keyword. Remember, our client's goal was not to show up for sales. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on add as a negative keyword, and I'm going to do this and put this into the campaign as a negative keyword so it doesn't show up for sales again. And then a couple of other metrics, as you can see, mobile is really, really doing well here. We wanna optimize for mobile as much as possible, and that's what people are clicking on. So going over to the search term, something I like to do on a daily basis in their PPC management is just make sure that all of the search terms that are showing up inside of this actual column here are the terms that we want to show up for. And I may even recommend creating new ads and, and updating your negative keyword list for any of the terms you don't want to show up for. So I keep a very close eye on this as much as possible day by day. And if you have conversion tracking showing up, you'll be able to see which keywords convert for what. So there you have it. That's the video. That's how to run ads for a local service-based business. If you found value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.